All right, guys, who's up? Thanks for your time. Yeah, you bet. How did you feel uh, takeaways from the renegotiation with Joe Nixon? I thought Joe handled it very professionally, understood, uh, you know, um, uh, he's motivated. He wants to win. He's uh, he's always been uh, highly competitive, and uh, I it, it we we tried to find something that worked for everybody, and we think we did. And uh, proud of Joe for going through it and handling it. And sometimes we have to do what we feel is best for for the entire football team. And and um, and I was I was proud of the way he did that. You know, he's he's the guy that we think he is. He's he's a motivated player that wants to win. Guys have spoken so highly. Yeah. Why renegotiate? It's just something that we thought was best for the football team going forward, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes you got to make some hard decisions, and uh, and we felt like this was one of them. But we came to a solution that we uh, all felt good about. What are your thoughts on the devaluation of the running back position across the NFL? I don't have a lot of thoughts on that. I, I think locally, I think with us and what works with us and what works going forward with us. Uh, what's happening around the league with other teams, I think, will be a, a hundred different reasons. But, but for us, this was something that we felt uh, we needed to do. Yeah, we like Joe, and Joe's been a good uh, player for us, and he's, he's he can be a big part of what we do going forward. He knows that and wants to win, and we like the way that he prepares, and we like the way that uh, you know yeah, football means something to him, and uh, so we're we're happy that it worked out. Any closer to a, a new contract extension? With yeah, I'm not going to provide any updates on. Uh, maybe there'll be people through here that will, but I, I don't have any updates on uh, any contract negotiations with with any of our guys. Unfortunately, you know, we we'd like to get a, guys uh, re-signed. We want them uh, here long term. I think they know that, and we'll see what happens as we go. But that's that's the only update I have. We we'll, won't be given blow by blows here. I don't know. Anything has to be uh, the first domino uh, if if we're playing dominoes. But uh, we have a number of guys that we won't, we would like to uh, uh, have long term, and we'll see if we can get it worked out. But beyond that, I don't have any updates. You had the youngest roster of any playoff team last year. Mm -hmm. What's the most exciting part of the new chapter for you this year? I don't know. It's the enthusiasm is still there, and this is the time of year for for our team to kind of grow back together and 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 be the this year's version. And and it doesn't always carry over, so you got to work hard to get that to carry over, get the cohesion to carry over, the camaraderie to carry over, the leadership to carry over. But we've got a lot of guys that are early in their careers, and they all feel like. Uh, we have what we need to uh, to win it all, and that's our mindset every year. And, and this year is no different. But there's a lot of enthusiasm when you walk through our locker room. With the team now a proven commodity, how is this offseason different? Um, I don't know that I have a great answer for that. We approach the offseason at the same every. You know, we're, we're trying to find the best players for us. You're, you're always trying to build the pipeline of young players coming in. You're always evaluating free agents that are out there and, and who might be able to fill a niche for you. And then you're always looking to maybe extend guys who are on your football team that you want to be around all, all year. So our offseason isn't different. The, the names change, uh, the, the players change, but we're, we go about it in the same way every year. How happy have you been overall with the progression of a lot of these rookies over this summer? Yeah, we haven't done enough to know, you know, and that asked me in five weeks and, and I'll be able to tell you who's come on and who's uh, who's processed the information and then put it out on the field. And and that's the big thing for a lot of rookies is what to do and then to go out and, and actually do it when the bullets are flying. And so it's, um, you know, we'll see. But what we do in the offseason program anymore isn't enough to really uh, know. We know that they can find their way to work and go home and know where the cafeteria is. But other than that, I, I can't really tell you how any of them are doing yet. You have your coordinators back. Mm -hmm. You've got a pretty serious look in Indianapolis. Yeah. To have this advantage of returning the three leaders. Yeah. 
Well, um, I haven't run the numbers on how unique, but it's valuable to us and we like it. You know, continuity is a good thing and, and we know what to expect out of our coaches and they know what to expect out of us and the players know what to expect out of them. We can build on what we have uh, been building here. Uh, it's easier to build when somebody is not starting over and um, uh, I'm very proud of our coaches. They're all worthy of any opportunity that they get. Um, I mean, I, th I think they're all fantastic, and it's great to have them back. It really is. Jesse Bates would mention early on, thought Lou hated him. You know, you tough love. How interested are you to see that young secondary room kind of be molded under Lou? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it 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 uh, it's an exciting group. They have a ton of physical potential. Now they got to come together as a unit. Defense is is not 11 individuals playing. It's 11 individuals playing as one, and that's what makes for good defense. And so it takes time for those guys to, to build that. And so we've got training camp. We got three preseason games before we really get going. And and you know I know Lou and his coaching staff will, will get those guys up to speed. And you know they, you've got to believe in the guy next to you, and and believe that the guy next to you is going to do the right thing. And, and then you've got to be confident enough to, to do the right thing for yourself. And so it'll be fun. They are, they're all talented. I know that. What do you think is, is necessarily unique about the coordinators? The coordinators what? What's so unique about them that, you know, obviously the success is what yeah. they What is it that separates them? Well, I think they're organized. I think they communicate clearly. Uh, I, I think uh, people believe what they say. Uh, I, I think they're direct in their in their communication. I don't think they beat around the bush. I, I, it, people might not like everything that comes, you know, into their ears from them, uh, but sometimes they need to hear it. And and our guys are, they they just say exactly what needs to be said, and and then they have all the experience in putting together, you know, our defense, the Bengal defense, the Bengal offense, to fit the players that we have and to maximize the players that we have. And I think that's what makes the best coaches in the league is, is how do we get the most out of each individual guy? What role fits them best? And, and I think our coaches really do a great job of that. I feel good about it. You know, there, there's a lot of guys that have played together now that, uh, that uh, um, have real leadership a real desire and, uh, you know, and, and, and a year under their belt of success. It's, there's always going to be a few moving pieces. You know, it's hard to go through the year with just five guys. You're going to need uh, six, seven, eight uh, that all can come in and fill big roles. And, and so it's on them to come together as a group. But we got a pretty good head start based on who's in the building and how they played last year. Jones certainly sounded excited to play yeah. ahead. You know, Jonah, uh, we, we believe in Jonah. He's been a good player for us here. Um, you know, his role will be defined on, you know, how he, how he comes back from the injury and, and what the coaches feel is the best role going forward. That's that's on our coaches to find the best five and, and where they'll, they'll line up and how they'll play. Uh, but I've always been impressed with Jonah. And, and when he's in the building, he's focused, he practices hard, and he's played well for us. So it's good to have him back in. After being at or near the, the top of the mountain the last couple of years, what's the most challenging part from your perspective in terms of maintaining that spot? And staying there? Well, just know. maintaining it, you know. It, you always have to have young players coming in because uh, the reality of our league is that you're not going to be able to keep everybody. Somebody somewhere is going to be – is going to – have to go and leave and uh, whether it's because of their success or because of injuries but you always have to have a pipeline of young guys that are available and able to step up and so it's it's no different if you have a bad team or a good team the young players have to keep coming in the building and then you also have to supplement that with veterans who are available that can fill roles for you so it our, our process is the same uh, probably the biggest challenge is when you have a lot of good players trying to keep as many of them as possible, and, and we'll see what we can get done there. One of those guys is DJ Rio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a rock. You know, um, when he's been available to play, he's he's been a big force for and a reason that that we have a good defense, and and he's relied upon in a lot of different roles and ways, and 
and he's been a great leader for us. And I think the young guys look up to him, and I think he gets uh, he brings along guys really well. And so it's uh, he's just a great teammate and an outstanding player. All right, fellas. Hey, appreciate you, man.